We got into a huge fight because she ate my ass and I came so quick. Okay. Yeah, this is gold. Yeah. This is gold. <laughs> we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling? No. Where the hell is the bartender? Yeah, where is he? We don't need him. We don't need him. I need a drink. All right, Sam like needs a drink. I like this new studio, man. Yeah. That's all you need. It's good to see you, man. And this is a shared space, right? So it's not even that fucking expensive. Not like no, this is all ours. No, no, but I'm saying outside. It's, you know, oh, the whole yeah, floor. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Our Dude, garbage that... has a fucking compound. I know, I know, compound But media. it's good. Yeah. They're huge. Talking about Foley. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big smoker. Oh, yeah. Dude, uh... Last time I saw you was in the Nick game. Oh, I know. It's that was fucking brutal, dude. Brutal. I, w I was on the street last night after the loss, and I'm wearing uh, a Nick sweatshirt, and some guy goes, hey, I'm in my moons, just like, like yeah. let me just eat away the pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some guy walks up to me, he goes, hey, Sam, why don't you take that sweatshirt off after that game? And Woo! I just, I don't, I ignore him, because I'm like in a bad mood. And he just says again, hey, Sam. I said, I go, I heard you. Yeah. I go, I fucking heard you. And nah. he just goes, okay, yeah, and you. walked away. That's the one yeah. something about celebrity is... They get the I'm not a celebrity, but well, you know what I mean. He knew yeah. your name, no, but you are to people. He yeah. knew you, so um, he's, he goes, "Hey, good job or great set, Sam. That's nice." But hey, Sam, yeah, your Nick suck. I'll match your energy. There you go. If you yes. say good set, I'll say thanks. Right. What are you doing? A protein shake? Yeah, is that stupid? I mean, it's a drinking podcast. What I'm saying, I'll, you look I'll get great any, though. By the I way, I can only because I, I got to cut my eating hours stop in about 40 minutes here, so I just got to get in the last. Uh, we'll get you some calories. Are yeah. you intermittent? Yeah, Ooh, changed my whole life. I like, do it too. Literally, but you, but see the thing. Do you is, really? I well, I do it on accident. I was gonna say you've always the pe what I've learned is, and I bet Sam does it on accident. The people who have always maintained. He can use some fasting. The people who can always, <laughs> no, 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 the people who can, who, who always like had good builds like you and Sam always naturally did it. I realize like I have to force myself to do it or I'm not going to stay in line. My metabolism. Mm. So now I pretty much eat 10 a.m. to 6, sometimes 11 to 5, depending on the hours. And yeah, dude, it changed my whole fucking what life. What do you mean? Really? So before it was just you would snack before bed, you mean? Before I would just, I had no rules. I would just eat like, you know, my daughter would, you know, my kids be eating. It'd be 7 o'clock. I'd be eating a little bit of their pot a little bit of their desserts but like oh i'm not eating that much but it doesn't matter your body's metabolism is kicking in uh -huh. and you're breaking out of your fasting even if you have anything over 30 calories so i was never in a state of calorie deficit and my body uh -huh. was never burning my body was never burning its fat right it was always like you know so 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 now i do now i go i don't even know what he's 16 making 16 to 18 hours here. with no eating so are, you make, are, we, are you down for Manhattan or no? Sure, I can do a Manhattan. You, you can't whatever, make that. Whatever's easiest to make. Well, he can't make a Manhattan. You see I, the, are you really a, making it for us? tonic once. So, yeah, I can do it. Really? Yeah. Uh -oh. Your wife drinks Manhattans? Yeah, it's her drink. What? <laughs> Who's your wife? Humphrey Bogart? Uh, <laughs> you kind of look like Philip Seymour Hoffman. Ooh. In a way, in a little way, a good-looking good Seymour. Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. But, it's, but it's his career that's dead. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh yeah, I mean, you look like Hoffman now. <laughs> <laughs> he was the best. He oh, really was. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I was watching the other night. Along came Polly. He's so he's funny. He's so in funny. The basketball like, such scene. a good comedic. I mean, Baldwin the, too. The it's second like, scene of the movie when yeah. he walks in and slips on the floor is fucking it's hilarious. So funny. Yeah, raindrop. I mean, some of the word terms that we use, like sharding, how we just—that's from that movie. No, the first time you ever heard the term sharding, Philip Seymour. That might be true. Polly. It is. It, that, that's. Are you pulling? Oh, never look at heard that. it before. Oh, that was raindrop. That's in Manhattan, right? Isn't that by the cellar? Is that the one in the West Village? No, no, no. no. Is it? I thought I could be wrong. Sasquatch. Oh, I got a P for you, basketball related. I was playing on the road and this dude was shirtless, which I was just like, he just takes his shirt off mid game, and I'm like, I gotta guard the shirtless and guy he's now. And wet and it's slippery. It, that's a tactic. I, wet, wet it men. Is. That's a peeve. Wet Tiki, men. Tiki Barber told me that a tactic for some of the players uh, in the NFL when he was playing was to not shower and to smell like absolute shit because he said you had a lot of people who like they would smell so bad or not brush their teeth or just be disgusting that you would kind of think twice about having that guy roll on you or like taking it to him so he was like i, I people that was like a tactic for people to be not hygienic I was right like, wow. huh that my, makes sense then he told me a funny that. story once about the cleveland browns about how they played the browns on like one of those like um uh, saturday early afternoon games like toward the end of the you know play towards the playoffs uh towards the end of the regular season and they, they played the cleveland browns and you know they beat the shit out of them and then they weren't going home that night, the Giants. They were going to wait and go home the next morning. So they decided to go out to a nightclub yeah. in Cleveland. And they are the Giants. So they all were just like walking in. And he said Tiki Barber was walking in. And I forgot some other player was walking in. And they noticed. And he fumbled his ID. Yeah, I know. No, th that, And they noticed the yeah. Cleveland Browns 
members of the Cleveland Browns football team waiting online to get into the club. The people at the own in their own city's nightclub wouldn't let them in because they didn't know that. And they're like, "Do you guys want to just come in with us?" And he's like, "We walked in the home team into their own nightclub." He was <laughs> oh like, my god! Yeah, and then the guys were just saying, "It was like how much it sucks to play for that team." Wow! Oh my god! Yeah. They get no respect. They had that QB Bernie Kosar in the '80s, and the guy just got the shit kicked out of him. Dad and his dad stole all his money. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He was on like the famous broke. Broke. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but he. Uh, he would cut like eight concussions or something, and the fans are just booing him. Yeah. Like, this dude's dying. Well, that, that's how his dad started stealing his money because he was so concussed and fucked up that his dad was just like, This guy's like my son's a retard. So now, mm. so I'm just going to take his money. And it's, it's, it's the worst father ever. <laughs> yeah. Kind of hilarious. So, like, that was definitely a good time. He gets another hit. He's like, That's another 10 grand right there for yeah, me. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Didn't the Jordan's dad die? Yeah, gambling, gambling related, right? The, he got the, killed. The Russians killed him, I think. I don't know who I killed don't know if him. They ever proved it, but yeah. pro- mm. possible. He was like pulled off the side of the road. The, yeah. the 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 conspiracy theory that I don't know if it's true is that you yeah you yeah, know, right. it's that uh, they asked him to take a break from basketball because it was getting bad press, and that's why he did the baseball thing for a year. Oh, is that why? Although, but, but the, the baseball me, was worse well, than the dad died. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But but the thing is, it makes no sense to me that conspiracy theory because he's the biggest star in yeah, the league. Why would play. you? You'd want him to play. Yeah. They're going to suspend him for gambling. Right. And then he said, and "Are you mic'd up, by the way?" Oh shit. Oh They're man. They're going to suspend him for gambling. Uh, yeah. And they said that's too bad for the sport. So why don't you just take a year off and say you're retiring and you come back right. in a year? Mm. And that's, then his son died the... as well. Jordan. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. Did he? You're thinking of Cosby. Ah, both side of the road shootings. Though. Both side of the road shootings. Sorry. Yeah. Cosby's son was killed. Yeah, just randomly side of the road. He yeah. was changing a tire. Boom. Interesting. Crazy. Yeah. Maybe it was a you know one of the victims getting a little revenge. <laughs> now you go to sleep. <laughs> uh, what are you doing with Guinness? This is a starter because uh, I don't have ginger ale for this. Are you put Manhattan ginger ale in Manhattans? What is this? The I'm 1940s? You, man. This no, this is not how you make a Manhattan. Style. It's sweet vermouth, bourbon, and bitters. That's all it is. Okay, I'll make it. Oh, this is now. Bad. I'm now. I really don't trust. No, this. no. Where's the uh, pick me up? Where's the other a quarter bartender? beer? He's, he's late. He's <laughs> what the late. Hell are we doing? No, the girl. Oh, uh, what was her name? She's nursing. Oh, she has. She had a full baby, right? Oh she yeah. Who did? And she's already back. Who? What's her face? The uh, girl, Jamie. Jamie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Couldn't think of her name. Sorry. <laughs> the, the girl. She's very hot. Remember she on is. pro wrestling, there was there was a uh, side <laughs> character girl. that would come out. Uh, her name was Woman. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> That's all they could come up with is a name. They're like, you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that with the trans athletes. Hey, woman! <laughs> I saw a hot trans walking over here. Did you? On the 8th Avenue was fucking ripe with them. Was she holding hands with Jim Norton? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it is fucking Norton's, Norton's, Norton's new material oh, about yeah. his trans it's girlfriend great. is so funny. He's amazing. Jim. Yeah. Good comic. You saw, there's a lot of, what, on 8th Avenue? 8th Avenue. Tons, really? So like, yeah, there's a lot of homeless out there today. Oh, it's that's crazy. Well, the heat, you know, the sun's coming out, so they're yeah. out. This is a nice building, though. This is this is really nice. You like How it? Have you guys been here? Not that long. Not a year. I think it's good here. It's great. We love it. We're we're parked. Yeah. We're staying. We're staying, yeah. baby. Uh, Did you see the trans uh, poker player one? No. Uh, some guy said, "I'm gonna identify as a woman," and he went to the women's poker and won the whole tournament. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, because women can't have a good poker face. They can't ah, hold anything in. That's yeah, true. That's true. Yeah. That write that down. That's a bit. <laughs> that's true. But All it's right. just. But but poker should be even. It should be men and women because it's it's just there's no physical. Right. But yet the guy still won. So he identified as a woman to enter. Damn right. slippery slope. Damn. This is how they get you. And I think a guy <laughs> did that with um, weightlifting as well. He a guy identified as a woman and won the weightlifting. Really? The women's. Yeah, sorry. I, I jerk off to this stuff at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. So wait, yeah, how was Sicily? Amazing. You went with the lady. Yeah, Sicily was good. I'm it, half Sicilian. It, um, are we on? We're good. Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, we've been rolling. Yeah. Oh, oh we're cooking, cooking, baby. Jeez, oh, is, is this that bad an episode? Oh, good. <laughs> oh, you're using sure. this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the show, actually. I, um, I, no, Sicily, <laughs> Sicily, Sicily was great. It's um, White Lotus was there. Why, that's where I stayed in the San Domenico mm. Palace. The same. Resort. Is it really fancy? It's really. It was really nice, but it was with one of the those, kids as well, or just the no, lady? just Jazz and I. Yeah. And um, we had a good time. Um, I learned something. I was asking the, uh, the 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 Italian guys. Whoa, that guy's tall. The beard Jew. There it is, baby. What was your uh, beard Jew train late? 
I got stuck behind a motorcade on the express bus. Ah, uh, Biden's nice in town. Is he mic'd up? Is Biden in town? No, yeah. I think he died. Nice, buddy. Yeah, um, we... I uh, and what he said was the this Italian baggage handle guy. I was asking him questions. He's like, "What do you see? Like, like, what is anything you learn from seeing all these people come in and out?" He goes, "The people with the most luggage have the worst time." He goes, I think the more ah. luggage people bring, and it's usually Americans, always complain, always get into a fight with their wife and kids, always are sitting down in the bar alone. He said the people who come with almost nothing, with just like a knapsack or one little travel or one little carry-on, have a great time. That That's makes it was sense. like pack light. That that would be my advice. It's a metaphor for life. Yeah. You don't need like, all this shit, all nice. these material things, you know? Yeah. You just need your family, your friends, and yeah. a But who cocktail. normally really brings the extra bag is women they need a million outfits well, that, woman that's, well that's what i said <laughs> that's what i said to him i was like well because i saw him i was sitting at the bar by myself i was like i i brought almost nothing yeah and i'm having a bad time but i'm having a bad time because <laughs> my girl ate my asshole uh, a few hours ago and then i came in too quickly and she thinks i'm gay now <laughs> that's wow. a real thing we got what's the male g-spot right that's there. what i said i was like what are you talking about like you can't like, did she really call you gay yeah she was like she was like crying she's like this confirms it and she was just like <laughs> i swear to god she was like looking that out was, ah, wait she, that was the test no she, yeah she didn't do it yeah. for your pleasure she did no, it to our see room, our room had like this nice little balcony and she was like literally weeping be like this confirms it as she was sipping prosecco looking out at the mediterranean <laughs> <laughs> like what am i gonna do yeah i was like well i'm gonna go downstairs and find a fucking guy then i'm gonna Hell find yeah. armand on the way out you should have been like, <laughs> You should have walked in and said, and your shoes are terrible. Yeah. So, yes. Damn. No, but it, it was it was great. It's the only place that I've been to where I actually fell in love with the people. You know, like mm. when people say that. Yep. Yeah. I never understood that. But now I was like, oh, the people, their way of life. Not everything is about money. Not everything is about the hustle. Not everything is about, oh, I saw this idea on Shark Tank. Not everything is that. They're like, we just live. We make enough money to live our life and it, and it was sweet i was like well if i took that attitude i wouldn't be staying in this fucking hotel so get me <laughs> get me another diet pepsi for <laughs> yeah. it's always funny when people give you that advice you're like what is this 2009 <laughs> yeah right, you know? oh yeah no dude more the fucking white what lid. yeah they it was like four grand a night what? For a what well here's what i do here's how i live my life because that does that does sound like a lot of money and it is yeah but i do one one trip Every 18 months, I don't do it every year, I do it every 18 months. This okay. is that trip where I just have a guilt-free spending trip that I, I'm consciously thinking about taking a percentage of my income monthly to put towards this guilt-free spending trip. And that was this. Well, That's she made you feel guilty. She called exactly. you gay. Exactly. I know. I was like, I should have taken Mateo. He would have ate my <laughs> <laughs> Also, are you gay when you're signing that check at the end? Huh? Yeah. yeah how gay am I now, lady? Yeah, exactly. Fucking unbelievable. I'm gay. I did pick out the stucco, which is gorgeous in the backyard, though. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'm not gay. Now put on this strap on real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Peg me. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, it was good, man. How that do doesn't you, make you gay. That's ridiculous. How do you say eating? And there's nothing wrong with being gay, by the way. But we can't start until, what do you well, well, he's got a. All right, let him. He's going to make a real cocktail. All right. Cool. All right. Yes, geez, Salacuse really not filling in well. Yeah, uh, pouring us a, a quarter Guinness. I know, here. This is like a before and after. Feeling, and, uh, uh, it's like tequila, room temperature. Right? It's like yeah, some tequila. Yes, sir. Or like a little antihistamine and uh, a hundred percent, dude. You look like uh, like a professional soccer player or something. You look like some type of Viking guy. <laughs> just, yeah. just the Isn't he a Viking? You know they invented shitting on the chest, supposedly? Really? Supposedly, uh, I don't know what the Viking leader, who it was specifically, but supposedly they would come and raid and, you know, your standard Viking stuff, raid, pillage, rape, kill the kids, all that fun sure, stuff. Sure. But then they would, yeah. what some Viking clans would do is in, in, in an effort to show dominance, they would keep a couple of people that they were going to make slaves alive. And before they killed the top chieftain of that tribe, they would hold him down and each member of the new Viking clan would come and shit on his chest. Mm. I could take that. To me, a, sh a chest shitting is way right. better than getting raped or pillaged. Sure. It would suck if you're like the one constipated Viking. <laughs> just like, I can't get it out. Just, or a blood shit. <laughs> or you're just shitting out little rabbit pellets. Oh, yeah. It's like getting slimed on Nickelodeon, but yeah. even worse. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's... I mean, although the Germans decided to make it a sexual thing, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. made the it a humiliation films. thing, but they the Germans... And Odell Beckham enjoys it. Supposedly. Supposedly, yeah. yeah. Supposedly, yes. Yeah. Well, supposedly they say he's gay. Supposedly, yeah. Supposedly he likes his butt getting eaten by yeah. women. Sicily. Wonder why. Yeah. I think um, what's his face is um, is definitely gay. The way he speaks. Uh, oh God. Oh, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey's gay. Cr me, Chrissy D. Um, I'm <laughs> I'm blanking. Somebody. It's like he's so openly gay. Wouldn't that be funny if the, Fuck, the Minnesota Vikings did that when they won the game? <laughs> <laughs> they just shit on the, uh, the other team. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that's what Lizzo means when she's like boyfriend on the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. She just loves getting shit on the chest. <laughs> now that would be a scary yeah. shit because you're like, oh God. Yeah. Oh, oh that's my a God. lot of that's Chipotle. That's a dump. Yeah. Big dump. I'm attracted to Lizzo, though. She's got a oh, pretty yeah. face. Yeah. Some ways. Yeah. yeah. I like her. I, I like her confidence and energy. Sure. Talented. Yeah. yeah, she's Talented. vegan. Is she? Oh, yeah. That's Everyone's a lot going vegan now. of grass. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot she's of... She's got a graze. Yeah. <laughs> graze Speaking anatomy. Grazing, look at this. I bought you guys gifts. Oh, what? I bought you guys on, treats Italia. from uh, Angelina Bakery. You guys hey. ever go there right by your studio? Here. Here. Well, I, I don't want it. Don't, uh, throw, it. don't uh, throw it. Yeah. And then I got... Uh, this is... Oh. You know what this is? You know what, you know what bugs me about this? Yeah. This guy comes in drinking protein shakes, working out. He's trying to fatten us up. Yeah. And That's then he brings know. this shit. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. Come on, oh get a shot of that. Oh. Pistachio, strawberry, Nutella, and that's I came in that one. Well, Mark Mark <laughs> wants a Nutella, I know. Yeah, oh, take it, yeah. Man. And then I think that one might be a hazelnut cream or anything. All I right. said, I know you guys aren't fat, but your staff is. <laughs> no, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I'm a, I'm a fatty as well. I love eating this shit. I try I try to only eat it on the weekends. Which but. one is that? That's like some hazelnutty. Uh, Ooh, baby. Yeah, they're all good, man. So they're yeah. cream Welcome. filled. They're all cream filled. Yeah, the place is not. I don't want to give away your location, That's but it's like not far ass. from where you are. All it's right. down the street. Oh, I'll do a little. You pie. know where it is? You ever been there? No, right no. On, it's right on Eighth Avenue. And it's this awesome. Is all I do donuts. Donuts, coffees, yeah, uh, Italian sandwiches. They got real, actual, like Italian gelato. Ooh, they have, I, you know, the gelato's real when they have the rectangular, um, you know, polders that they have. Yeah, in there. I know what you mean. That's real gelato. Trying, which one yeah. you I want the Nutella, if you don't mind. The Nutella, yeah. Now, what okay. are you doing? Look at look at all that in there. Look at pistachio, that. Pistachio. That's pistachio. Wow, that is. that's high end. That high end, good. baby. Look at that. Classic Manhattan kid going after what do we pistachio. Think? Oh, sugar right on the pants. We're real slops. Oh, oh, that is fucking good. Oh man, <laughs> that's very good. Would you like some, man? Yeah, anybody. Whoa. Peters, I see you drooling over there. Oh, you, oh, so you know about it. Do you really, Peters? He's like Norm yeah, over there. It's good, Peters. right? <laughs> yeah, they have good coffee as well. <laughs> he goes right for the cakes. Damn. Oh wow, that's a lot of newt. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, newty. Oh, you know that actually Lizzo. comes from a Viking's butthole, right? Yes. There. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Absolutely. Sam, dirty martini for you. Oh. What What, what is everyone else doing? We're doing I got like a tequi- a, uh, some tequila. Yeah, concoct. it's like a little tequila Make margarita do, action. Uh, Thank Make you, my three. friend. What are you doing? I'm doing that. I'll do what everyone's doing. All right. I'm a team player. Oh wow. Yummy, that is yummy good. in my tummy. Mm mm mm. mm. Yeah. Wow. Have you been on the road heavy, uh, Chris? I just got, I just came back from a uh, shout out to good people of Buffalo, Ithaca, and Albany. Uh-oh. Um, Quit bragging. That, that Did you was, go to that restaurant I told you about? No, we didn't go. I couldn't make it. Um, but I, I had food in Ithaca. I went to this place. I think it's called Reds in Ithaca. It was some of the best food I ever had in my life. Um, it was good. But now I'm on, I got a couple more. Sh- I got one more date in Newport. Rhode Island, May 28th, and then I'm, I'm taking the summer off. Is I'm that the Rogue, in August. Rogue Island? Yeah, yeah. That's a fun fest. Yeah, I'm doing uh, my man Doug Key. I'm doing two shows there somewhere. Doug Key. Love the Doug. But then, yeah, summer off, and then... Uh, Is that you do that off for your kids? For my kids, yeah, and for my own... I, I haven't really taken any time off from uh, since like we got back at it from the pandemic, so I was like, let me just take some time. And yeah, July, June, July, like hang with the kids, and then August, I go back heavy. I got... Radio City, September 22nd. Whoa! Local boy makes good! Yeah! <laughs> and then the theater at Madison Square Garden, September 23rd. That's uh, then, that uh, Yeah, baby! And then, um, and then, uh, and then I'm gonna put a fall tour on sale, you know, soon. And you then, gotta ask for a, a custom Chrissy D. Nicks jersey. I want Whoa. it. Whoa! Do you know, like, the path, like, like, we, here's the thing with us, right, is we, uh, you know, you, you don't know if it's gonna happen, but, like, we're, you know, Sam and I are New York boys, we are on a path. Like, you will sell out the Hulu Theater at MSG, and then you might even add a second one, probable let's, add a second let's one. Let's take it one No, but I'm saying time. it's probable it's going to happen. And then you know, like, the, the thing, again, not that it's going to happen, but we have an actual chance. Like, it's not out of the realm of possibility to perform at, like, the real Madison Square Garden. Sure. It's not out of the realm of possibility. It's, no. It's like there's people who are in line to do it. All three of us are. But it's like, as New Yorkers, it's like, if that happens, it's almost like, it's almost like if that happens, then like where do you go from there? What do you do? What are you even? What are you doing? I like think you do, everything else is just like all right. 
Yeah, I think weird sex stuff. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's, I, yeah. that's when you get into kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. I mean, look at Epstein. He he had everything. Where do you go? What's your what's your? Because uh, obviously New York is where the garden. But is I'd it you the garden as well? Eight year, nine year old. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the garden is is great. I, I, something about Carnegie really scratches my taint. I you love that Carnegie. Carnegie. Well, how many seats is that? Three thousand. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, you could yeah. do that right now. Oh, right now. I would love to what? Carnegie. Easily. Yeah, but I like all the room. I like the Ryman is is special. Right. Um, is there anything in New Orleans that's like special? The to you? Sanger. The Sanger is like our beacon, kind of. And I would love to do the Sanger one day. I opened for Schumer there years ago, but to really headline the Sanger would be. But something. you think you? I think you could do it now. I could do it. I. I mean, give me three years. It's it's probably like five thousand seats. Is it? Yeah, and I that's think, a lot in New Orleans. Cause I know, but you. I feel like I think you what, could do where it. Where you're man. from you're is a big easier. act. Hmm. I don't know, but I, I'm like you. I. They say never buy your dream car. Because then where do you go from there? It's depressing. Yeah. So I like just running around, doing all the all You the would rooms. never... Do you have a dream car? Yeah. Do you even drive? Do you even have I, a I don't. I don't. I got a Beamer. I got oh, a 73, you? so Woo! I kind of have my dream car. Oh, yeah. Do you have a dream car? A dream car? Um, No. I have a Lincoln Navigator now. It's pretty nice. Oh, that's very For the nice. family. I see. Look at that. Yeah. It's a sweet ride. Oh, 73. yeah. You got a sick car. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I don't have a you, dream Jew. car. Uh, I, thank I would you, say, um, Cheers. Cheers, Cheers Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov on the Hulu Dreams. Theater and the... And the yeah, uh, the Radio uh, City. Radio and Radio City, City baby. Oh, there it is. There we go. There we go. That's a toot for the That's, toot. <laughs> he, always, he always leans it my way. I love it. Out of wow. respect for the guest. He's a guest, yeah. Yeah. Mark, Mark's farts are cute. Oh, thank you. They're, Mark is like kind of the closest to a cartoon character we have. Well, yes, yes. Tell, tell that to my wife when she's eating my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gay. Yeah, <laughs> she's eating his ass. Chipotle. <laughs> Comedy. Uh, Woo. Yeah. Because you're a wife now, married guy, do you guys think about like the future, like kids, finance, investing? Do you do any of that totally, stuff? Totally, totally. I, I think all that stuff's fun. I like uh, saving for the future. I like... I'm buying a house. I'm buying a brownstone in Brooklyn. Whoa. So, like, that's fun. Uh, and I'm thinking about, you know, you got to think about schools, all, all right. that bullshit. You're going to leave Manhattan and go to Brooklyn. Yeah, just get a little more space. I've done right. my Manhattan time, and I loved it, but... What part like of Brooklyn? Fort Greene. Oh, that's where I went to college, St. Joseph's College. Hey! Fort Greene, you would not have been they'd, welcome they'd, they'd, 20 they'd years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's changed quite a bit. Yes. Jesus. Um, I used to move furniture, and we moved this gay couple into Fort Greene. And it was from New Jersey to Fort Greene, and they had this huge place right on the park in Fort Greene. I remember being like, oh, my God, one day. And I moved all these ancient artifacts because they're gay, and they had all this cool shit and expensive shit. I nicked one vase. This thing was about this big from Zimbabwe, and I nicked it. Yeah, and this gay guy goes, ah! And he just flipped out. We he should have wrapped it up. What's he doing? I don't know, but we moved every single artifact. Mm. I was like Indiana Jones moving this shit. And then I nicked one thing, and he flipped out on me. Brutal. That's, that's like Mike Racine. I hired Mike Racine once to move for me. To, to, you know, I was moving from my apartment. I was moving from an apartment in Brooklyn to another apartment in Brooklyn. Yeah. And but one of the but then one of the couches that I had, I was going to bring to my dad's house. who was living in Staten Island. So Mike's like, hire me. I got it. Don't worry. So I'm waiting for him. He calls me. He goes, we're coming around the corner. So he comes down the block. It's just him in the moving truck. Uh, I was like, where's your team? I know. He was like, it's just me. I was like, you made it seem like you are part of a moving organization. He's like, nah, it's just me. It'll uh, save you money. It'll just be me and you. I'm like, I don't want to move this shit. Now you're carrying couches. I don't want to do that. I, I would have paid more to not do it. And he's like, it's fine. So we do it. We're going, whatever. Drop everything off. We're on my way to my dad's. We dropped stuff in my apartment. I, I'm not, you know, keeping track of all the inventory. That's his job. We get to my dad's house. He opens up the back. The couch isn't in there. He left the couch at the first place. I'm uh, like, the only reason we crossed the bridge to come to Staten Island was to drop off this couch. He was like, can I get some money to go back? I got to pay the toll. Uh, and I was like, oh, oh my God. You can't hire well, comics. But I paid him and fucking. I did a couple of those with him and he's just got a cigarette in his mouth the entire time. He's yeah. just breathing smoke in your eyes yeah. the entire time. And yeah. you got to sit in that little. That little uh, front part of the truck, whatever you call the The bed white of the windowless truck. van. You're yeah. like, we're pedos. Makes great sauce, though. Oh, I've yeah. seen and a great comic. You know what the, you know what the secret is? Is the carrots. Is oh, it? really? He puts a, just a little bit of carrots in Don't there. Don't give it away. The Paisan. That's all he has. <laughs> it's the Flaming Moe's episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Love Mike Racine. Mike's great a great guy. comic. We actually just rewatched one of his Conan sets, and he's like, dude, he's got so many good jokes in that set. He's got a kid now, too. Everyone's, getting, everyone's having kids. That's right. That's right. You want to do it. I want to do it. All right. Yeah. I think, yeah, give me a year. 
Give me a year. Do you guys have like 401ks and investments and do stuff like that? Or you don't think like that? I got all that shit. Yeah, I do. Do you have a financial planner that does I, it? Or I, have do a, I have a guy that does it. I think we're does the same it. guy. Yeah. Russell? Yeah, he yeah, 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 my guy. That's my guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. but but that's your accountant. Yeah. Oh. He then no, I've, I've, with a guy, a Schwab. Yeah, worked, yeah, 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 yeah. Schwab yeah. guy. Same, we got probably yeah, got yeah. the same Schwab guy too. Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab. <laughs> yeah. Right. Got it. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. Jordan Belfort is Jordan, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, very good. Yeah, because you'd be surprised yeah. how many of our peers don't have any of that. I oh, want to yeah. start like something. Wait, are you telling me people in entertainment are not smart with money? Well, I'm thinking of the ones of us who have it, the ones of us who kind of, you know, not that we're financial experts, but if any of us can become financial experts, it'd be a good business idea for us to create a company where the comics invest with us, the ones who can't do Ooh. it, and we do it for them, and they this, trust us. This sounds like a horrible idea. What do you think? Because I, I don't know shit about I know yeah. I hire people to do it for me. We, If we're involved yeah. and it goes south, we're criminals. Easy, made no, off. But, you're going, <laughs> but you're, you're giving up so much money to these financial planners. You don't even that's realize. That's true. 1%, you're like, oh, that's not a lot, but it's like... It is over the course of 30 years. You're going to give them like millions of dollars. But if we can learn it ourselves. Yeah, well, you guys both fired your managers, right? Yeah, but then I rehired another one. Oh, I'm still giving away 20% of my money. I am too, oh and it's God. kicking my yeah. ass. Not but me. I get these no. guys doing all my shit. But I'll I'm say this about my manager, Emilio Savone, a.k.a. the Italian woman. I'll, I'll say, say this. He's got a ponytail. Yes. I'll Be say careful. This. <laughs> I said this. He's got a ponytail. He's going through a midlife crisis, so not great. Woman. But, <laughs> but what he's, what I like about him is because he, he has graduated you know, from being a manager and all that. He's kind of in the new world where it's not just... He's not like booking my flights. It's not what he does. It's like uh -huh. he's digitally marketing me. He's he's all, all that stuff. It doesn't matter if you call into a radio station anymore and get on. It, it's fun, but nobody cares. It's the digital marketing. It's the Facebook. It's the Instagram. Right. It's all that. And he does all that. It's the constantly on the venues that you're going to, like, you know, getting their email list, email. He's controlling all that. So for me, that's like worth the money. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. But what about the little thing? Because I I'm a retard. I can't book a flight. I'll fuck it up. I'll I'll drive to Laguardia when I'm going out of Newark. <laughs> yeah. I do all that shit. He would do that too. But I just for me I'm I I those I guess since I became a dad I just know where I'm supposed to be uh -huh. always. But but so it, you do but all if that. You need that. Yeah, I just like to do it because I like to pick my flight. I like to use my points. I like to like uh -huh. take some time. But he would do that too. Okay, okay, because. I can't do any of that shit. Any kind of planning. So I get Mark had his manager book his honeymoon. Honeymoon which I've never heard wedding, of. vacation. I've never Did you take a commission? <laughs> yeah, because I'm already paying the guy. So I'm like, you want my ten percent? I think managers are running scared a little bit. I think they know that this is kind of a dying thing, these management yeah. companies. So how bad do we really need them anymore? I mean, you don't have one. You're doing all it's right. It's been years, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you get ten percent. You 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 I save that 10%. and I invest that in like video stuff. I pay for I, I just try That's to put a lot it all of money. Back. Well, I put everything back into my you know career into the into the shows and the road right. but you make a million dollars a year you give them 10 percent. that's a hundred grand that's a lot of fucking money yeah that's more that's than salaries ever seen or paid for a sweater I mean, t it's a tax write-off but it's still money it's still a lot true true it's a lot I of think dough. That, i think that we're all i think because here's the thing here's the thing as i told I, I i went you know i've been trying to do my own investing now right i have the vanguard account i've been trying to like watch my own things look mm. at my own just be a little i still have the money with all these guys that we have because i'm like Trust experts, you got to delegate and trust experts. I'm all about that. But I'm like, I need to start to be on the path to try to know this stuff and understand this stuff for my kids, right? Oh, same here. Dude, I'm like, GameStop is due to make a comeback. I'm put, I'm going all 100%. in. 100%. I'm going all and in And you on should that. do that. Yeah. Get your money in crypto right now. Dogecoin. <laughs> but, but, but one thing, like, because sometimes, like, we don't realize I was talking to, you know, an independent, you know, planner. He's just a friend of mine. He has not, he not does not. I, I try to talk to people now that ha are not incentivized to make money off me because then you get like the real you know, if they're monster. incentivized to make money off you they're gonna they're very cunning at yes, being like yes. put your money with me even i'll make you more of a return it's all capitalism uh, which i'm for because i love this fucking country but i will say talking to an outside source he was asking me he was like he showed i showed him my gross income and then my net is so radically different it's so much radically lower than the gross where he was mm. like you know how, where is where is all this money going he was like are you overspending i was like no and i'm showing him i have like charts and everything he's like where is all the, where's 20 percent of your money like every month you're giving so much of it away i was like that's to the manager and to the agent and he said he was like i have no idea about i'm not creative mm. i have not the slightest clue of what goes on in the creative world he was like i am telling you He's like, I've been doing this 25 years. I am telling you 1,000% that's a racket. That is Whoa. the definition of a racket. There is no 
there is no way anybody what? figured out mathematically why you have to give 10% to a manager and 10% to an agent. They are just saying you have to do it because you have to do it. It's mafia shit. Yeah. That is absolutely. Well, that's why I got rid of a manager He was like, you are being ago. ripped off. There is no way that they should be taking that much. This is what I'm saying. He said, if you're a professional athlete, gets a contract they give them what one percent two percent of the contract maybe three percent and the d argument will be oh well that's because i only make a one-time negotiation mm. for you at three percent so that's why it's Holy so much shit. less but i'd argue that it's like it's the same with me you're you, you've taken me in as whatever a commodity right a commodity a talent so it's like why do you get like so the 10%, the work that you do for me at 10% now is the same work that you're going to get 10% of when hopefully I'm That's five a good times point. as big. You're the same How guy. does this make sense? How, then, how long before we get artificial intelligence as an agency? Oh, well, that's coming. another thing I it's want to coming, talk to you baby. about. I'm working on it. But it's it's is, coming. Is it it's called Chris GPT. <laughs> <laughs> is this a manager with you five years ago? Because they helped you grow. So maybe they deserve a little bit. Of sort of I know, but, pay or but like, you get bigger and you're still paying them 10% of the more money you're making. But you wouldn't have gotten to. This is just their side of the argument. You wouldn't have gotten there right, without that. Right, and, and I understand I you know, and I understand that. I understand that wholeheartedly. The truth is, is that's it's their argument because they're being it, it they're being in a position them? to say how how else am I needed unless I tell you it, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be there. Of course it's the fans don't give a shit. They pay to see Sam. They don't. They don't care who you're repped by. I think. I think you cut the manager and you invest that ten percent in analingus and prostitutes. I yes. think that's what you do. That's what I want to do. That's Keep the, morale that's high. Yeah. That's what I want to do because yeah. I've told and I've sat my children down and told them like. I need prostitutes so I keep the relationship fresh with your mother. Yeah. <laughs> here, here. So that's my daddy. Has that should be your that. sitcom. It's just, it's just that, but with a laugh track. I'm sorry, I bang whores sometimes. Just a huge explosion. Yeah. Well, I have jazz and I have jizz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad sat me down when he was 16. He's like, Chris, the key to success is whores. <laughs> do we have any? Do we have news? Yeah, I got some good ones. Oh, baby. Ooh, I like your shirt, by the way. Thank you. Salad Hughes, old school. Instagram. You're the one. Hey! They, they sent me an ad. What I was site? Like, I like that. Is it on um, Paul Fredericks? Oh, I don't know. Okay. PFs. You look PFs. good. Well, you Chang. look good. I, I like it. it. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, yeah, very so old school. I got a news story here. Robert De Niro has Ooh. revealed that he has become a father for the for his seventh child. He is seventy nine years old. Can we make the font smaller? Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I saw that. There today. we go. That means wow. Father of the seventh child. At his age? What is he, 78? 79 years old. His worst decision since uh, Meet the Fockers. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like Meet the Fockers? Nah, I like the first one. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I like Meet the, the Parents was great. That yeah. was great. I have nipples. Uh, wait, let me take me? a wild guess. The kid's half black. <laughs> oh, he loves well, the dark. No, they got hey, so do they I, got, my friend. They got divorced, though, is him and his wife, who was. Uh, he black. found he's another a string one. of black women. Yeah. He used to date one of the waitresses at the cellar. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He dated. Yeah. yeah, for years, and then he would they, he would come to the cellar like that was like his uh, wow side piece. I, are we allowed to say your name? Uh, is that public? Yeah, yeah she loved the way, right? Let's I think she dated. Don't let's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I fucked her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we all had a turn. <laughs> <laughs> she loves white dick. All right. He's, uh, he's got a kid now, and he, he's, he's. I didn't know he's seventy nine. Well, Jagger just had one as well, and he's got to be up there. So the male sperm can really swim. Ready for this? Ready for this stat? I this fact I just learned. The last living, the last living person whose father fought in the Civil War, which was from 1861 to 1865, just died two years ago. Okay. So that means there was a guy walking around two years ago whose father fought in the Civil War because his the father fought in the Civil War when he was 16. He had this kid wow. at 90 years old. He was wow. 90 when he had this kid, and then that kid grew on to, I think the guy died when he was like 101. Wow. So it's like at 90, this guy had a kid, and he had fought in the Civil War. So he War fucked someone six. probably 50 years younger than him. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, because the women, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Had fought, yeah. Yeah, yeah and he, he fought for the South. So. Yeah, he fought for the South. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was probably his cousin. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Damn. well, you know, Ari Shafir's dad was in the Holocaust. <laughs> True story. Really? His dad. That's how old Ari is. Right. Yeah. So there. I mean, <laughs> well, how old is Ari? In his fifties? No. I'd say so. No, he's not. 50, yeah, no, a lot of these guys are sleeper picks, man. Oh yeah. You think they're young and they're like they're they're close to fifty. Will Vince is sixty-eight. 
<laughs> Something crazy. Six, Ari, I don't know how much Ari is in Jew years. But Bert, Kreischer's only, <laughs> <laughs> Bert Kreischer's only 24. Uh, yeah. 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 He's don't look up Ari's age. Dude, Tom Segura's only like 43. Yeah. Tom Segura's wow. like not that much older than us. Yeah. It's crazy. He's killing it. Yeah. He looks good. Yeah. He looks great. He's got a trainer every day at 8 a.m. He trains. He looks, yeah. he looks very good. Two he looks kids. great. They both look good. Yeah. Let's stay on track here with the Jews. Yes. Uh, an ice cream stand. <laughs> don't go near off Auschwitz. the train. Yeah, don't get the train off the track. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> great segue, Matt. Thank you. Uh, yeah. An ice cream stand near Auschwitz concentration camp causes a bit of a controversy. Mmm. Mm. Okay. I don't know. Ice, they have ice, they I serve think it's ice cream. A, it's a great idea. You, after that shit show, you need a little pick me up. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, happiness after this hell. Yeah, were yeah. we supposed to starve these kids too? What the hell? Oh, <laughs> I like that. I'm glad you said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I have free license on this topic? Oh yeah. That's. I, it's. I mean, look, it's it's far away. It's not like there's a dude in there with like a hot dogs and beer, being like, "Get your hot dogs," you know, yeah, you yeah, kosher, yeah. kosher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Made from the real bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Made from the same oven. Yeah. Oh my. Uh, I went to um. Do- Dachau in uh in uh what was it Germany concentration camp and they had to say they had to tell us before we got off the bus onto the you know into the Dachau do not make please do not uh uh go on Snapchat do not ah. do any Instagram filters please do not take any fun selfies yeah. in front of the ovens or on the fields <laughs> because people do that all the time and it really upsets the locals yeah and I was like wow could that you... upsets the locals not burning six million Jews well I've seen these influence go but out there and they go here we go folks yeah. I'm here and they make some, a joke some guy a selfie just like yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. YOLO <laughs> yeah well it's uh no I think I think the who cares it's ice cream right I mean I guess so. It's I guess people need to eat, you know. Hashtag genocide. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Well, it helps. Like it helps kids learn, probably, right? If you're, if you're like, oh, we get ice cream after. It's something to look forward to. But it's kind of a Jewy move. Like, how can I make money off of this? <laughs> right. Hey, I don't care. <laughs> sell ice cream. Just don't sell any Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> no, sell it all. I'd love to sell fuck Dylan McAvey. Yeah. yeah, you know. I think if it's a Jewish guy selling it, it should be all right. Let yeah. him get some money out of this. Yeah. yeah. Why the hell not? That's reparations. He there owns the ice cream go. stand. That's a good flavor. Reparation flavor. <laughs> yeah, over one million Jews died at this, you know, in Auschwitz. You think, well, I'm dying for some fucking Rocky Road. Yeah. That's your sales pitch right yeah. there. there. Let's we do go. this. Six million flavors. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. All right. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Hey, folks. We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Doer. Oh, yeah. Well... When Dewar sent us over their top-of-the-line shorts, I didn't expect them to be this good. Dewar make them, makes the most comfortable pants, breathable, lightweight, and durable. They never go out of style. I'm wearing them right now. I feel free. I feel secure. I feel frolicky and gay. Big fan. Big fan. And look, summer's coming up. Summer's here. I'm you're walking around New York. You're walking around in a weird dust cloud from Canada. Thanks a lot, Trudeau. All right. If you're a doer, these tough, cool shorts and pants will keep you, keep with you. You're not boring. Don't let your pants be. And it's not only pants. Doer's entire menswear line of jeans, joggers, shorts, tees, jackets are made to look sharp while keeping up with your busy lifestyle. Made from materials like wood chips, plants, and recycled plastic bottles, Dewar has finally made sustainable clothing that's long-lasting and stylish. I feel good. I look good. I smell terrible. Trust me, you need to add Dewar to your summer wardrobe. Check out Dewar's flagship stores in L.A. and Denver, or shop online at Shop Dewar. That's S-H-O-P-D-U-E-R dot com. Our listeners get 15% off site-wide using code DRUNK. That's pretty good. For 15% off your order, go to shopdoer.com, S-H-O-P-D-U-E-R.com, and use special promo code DRUNK. Get on it, folks. Thank you. It's time to break out the beach balls. It's smooth sack summer, boys. And that means Manscaped is here to make sure 
you're ready. Mm-hmm. Look good on the boardwalk or the wave runner. From the backyard BBQ to the yacht club, Manscaped's performance package will get you there. The lawnmower, lawnmower 4.0 trimmer with its LED spotlight and the 7,000 RPM motor takes care of you below. That means your ball bag. Mm-hmm. While the Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and nose hair trimmer for the older fellas takes care of above. Yeah, I've used this before. I trim my balls. If I have a woman going down there, I want to make sure it's not too hairy. Yep. I want to make sure that it's uh, groomed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I put a little Jewish Star of David in there with the trimmer. <laughs> I think it works nicely. It fights anti-Semitism. Get 20% off at, and free shipping with code DRUNK at manscaped.com. There's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code uh, DRUNK. Smooth sack summer. Get on board. Get left behind. Get 20% off at manscaped.com with promo code DRUNK. Here, here. Here's another news story. Iowa couple charged with leaving their child behind to take a trip to Kansas City. Wow. How bad is Iowa? <laughs> that you need to live it up in KC. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, that's... Yikes. Yeah. Where they do they look... leave the child? Like like a Home Alone situation? Yeah, Home Alone situation, yeah. This is real life Home Alone, though. You don't you don't have this. You have, you know, a kid wandering for fentanyl. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you... How old was the kid? I'm checking here. Hold He's on. young, I think. By the way, what's his fucking last name, Matt? Uh-oh. Oh, also, I, I think they're dressed the same. Let's see. We got oh, uh, Chansey, Mariah, Raylan, and... Oh, that's... And that's a Daggard, lot of kids. Buford. No, no. There's another name in there. Oh, dude. Jacob Morrill, 30 years old. Whoa, Whoa. doggy. He spells it differently, though. He's not a I, real Jew. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's not that's not a drug of choice usually. But uh, yeah, they left a kid on like a oh, seven year old. Seven. Wow. That's seven. Oh, seven is uh, uh, it's it's illegal. I'm trying to think. I have a seven year old daughter. She would um if I left her alone for a day, I think she'd survive. Give her well, an this iPad. kid survived, right? Yeah. But yeah, you can't. Yeah, but but. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I don't. Uh, what that's not age good. kid could you leave on the streets of Manhattan and like they could live like, uh, for Manhattan? a day or two? Do they have Someone, the apartment or on the street? They're on the, the street. street. This is hypothetical. Well, Manhattan is much easier than being abandoned on a highway here. Although I'm looking at their mug shots. I think this kid might be better off. I don't know. Yeah, yeah true. The guy's not bad looking. Actually, yeah, not at all. <laughs> the lady's terrifying. Yeah. But yeah. Now, wait, they didn't leave him in the home. They literally no. left him on the street. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Why did they do it? Were they in like a drunken, I, I, drug-fueled I, stupor? I think Kansas City is just that good. Yeah, <laughs> they wanted that barbecue. <laughs> right. Damn. Damn. That is well, rough. What can you do? Fuck that kid. <laughs> they're, be a, <laughs> they're better off. I mean, those these kids will go to a foster home Honestly, and live it up. If I was if I was in foster care and I took in that kid, first thing I do, take him to Auschwitz, get some ice cream. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We we're go. getting ice cream. Where? Get on the flight. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at her face. The barbecue ain't the only thing slow in a. <laughs> yeah, right. By the way, Hagendas sounds like a concentration camp. <laughs> I'm taking you to Hagendas. <laughs> no! Van Leeuwen. <laughs> yeah, a lot of German. Briars. <laughs> I don't think Van Leeuwen's German, but it sounds it. It's got the van. Yeah. <laughs> Kids love a van. Yeah. All right, so a cow in Poland escaped a slaughterhouse and swam across the river to an <laughs> island where it remained for weeks. The cow became a symbol of freedom and was eventually pardoned by the president of Poland. Then they ate him. <laughs> the cow, now named Saved, lives out his days in a farm sanctuary. What is this, Cool Hand Luke? What the yeah. hell's going on? I know, right? I didn't know cows could swim. Yeah, me neither. Interesting. Like the udder helps you float. Maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is I, utter just... madness. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow, my God. Look at the black cow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There it is. Clip it. That's a, they, they're not good swimmers, though. It doesn't ah, look smooth. They were hanging in there. They're hanging in, but I don't know. Is it so he gets to live, but then he has to watch all his friends get turned into a Big Mac? Right. That's right. a weird existence. So like you're guilt. safe. Every other cow is dead. Dude, I watched a documentary. I think it was something about fish. Is it Sea Spiracy? One of those? Yeah. The fish are disgusting. Like I thought you're eating fish or eating a cleaner meat, a wild salmon. It's all lies. Like mm. salmon is not so, that salmon that we eat that's pink. That's not its actual color at all. Like it's not oh, supposed really? to be pink. No, if you look at it, like they show the videos, they have like rashes all over them and blisters because of like the contamination Whoa. of like the water. It's f- fish is worse for you, even wild fish, than red meat, they say, because of Whoa. all the toxins. Really? Which you don't know. Yeah. 
I, I they like I was getting these omega three fish oil pills from Nordic Naturals, which is um like they were, I thought like oh it's Nordic, it's the Vikings, it's free fish, but they're like it's all fish farm, so it's like loaded with chemicals where you should be getting your omega threes from algae from because the fish eat the algae and that's where they get the cardiovascular benefits. So if you just like go to the source and eat the algae pills. That's supposedly that's better than fish oil. That's better. There's than There's a fish. new fad every three I years. Know. Fish oil, they say was you. good. They would say if fish oil was good for you know ADD and it gave you health benefits and right, stuff like that. Right, but now they're saying that because of all that was true, but now because of all the you know chemicals in these fish farms and uh, overproduction of fish and oh, it's going to get to the point where like the fish and most of the food we eat is all going to have to be genetically made in a in a lab yeah it's just gonna have to be because the wild animals we've polluted the earth so much that it's it the only way to do it is to now just home just make like the chicken from kfc is some of the healthiest chicken you can eat because it's genetically made in a lab whoa so it's like it removes i know dude i've seen the people who eat it they don't look that healthy (laughs) i know well no fried chicken is bad but it's like the healthiest type of fried chicken right that makes sense but it's so funny that the people who are like so anti-vegan are going to be eating food that's prepped similar to how vegans are eating yeah because if it's made in a lab and it's you know altered it's it's just where we're going It's, it's it was it was wild and like we get so many people that you have to keep pumping in these drugs to these animals to make them grow and get bigger and bigger because we need to feed everybody. Right. So, yeah, they're full of drugs and contaminants. So you're right. I think mm. the lab shit will be cleaner. Yeah, we've depleted something like we've depleted something like 80 percent of the fish source. Fish sources in the Atlantic Ocean are gone already mm. from like it from just like 100 years. Damn. But, yeah. It's wild, dude. We really will ruin some shit. But hey, yeah. right now, but hey, let's man, live it up. We're going down, man. Yeah, let's get we're ice cream. We're going down. Man. Now's the time to go down, have fun, and ice cream. I, it you know? sucks because I actually like f- seafood. I love my fav- seafood. Seafood's probably my favorite. Man, I ate a bunch of crawfish the other day, and I just think of Norman every time I eat it. Cause no, it's like, I don't. It's in that's New like, Orleans? That's like, yeah. No, it was in Texas, but that's like Mark's favorite food. I had a big old bag in, uh, last week in New Orleans. Just eat it right out of a bag. Crack crawfish. it open. Crawf- crawdads. I had crawfish ravioli once. It was awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. Very nice. Crawf- I, you can put anything in ravioli. True. <laughs> yeah, you can put anything. <laughs> Viking <laughs> shit, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Auschwitz ice cream. <laughs> 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 yeah. I love ravioli. I ravioli, tortellini. I'm a big cheese-filled pasta guy. Woo! Yeah, no, it's the yeah. best. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just awesome. cheese and pasta. It's I the think best. Italian food's the best food, and I really don't think it's like when people try to debate it, they just it's like just shut up. It's I just, mean, it's, it's just the, the best food. It is a safe. I mean, I is love it. I, I mean, it's just it's all noodles. It's a different shape, and then a sauce. But yeah, what's, it, what's, what's Mexican Italian, food? Right, you could go to an Italian restaurant, and you could just pretty much know that at least something on the menu is you're gonna like. Oh, uh, that's true. That's true. You can't go wrong. I just feel like Italian is safe. Like I feel like you can't really bring anyone out. Although these days, who knows? People have like weird gluten shit and, and, and this stuff. car, a lot of carbs. Yeah. I went the food in Sicily. Everyone talks about how the food in Italy and Sicily is like amazing and mind blowing, and maybe it's because. I went in there with like this notion of like this food's going to be great but like every other meal was like not that good yeah there was like a couple of dishes that I had like this is the best pizza or best pasta I've ever had in my life but then every other dish was like this is like fine right because I think they we have so much preservatives and salt and stuff in our food that it's like America we just have the best food like they don't have this shit in Italy this size they just no, don't have it no well you way. can find it but it's like in the tourist parts for Americans like they would never eat this and I'm like you know yeah, this is how you have to live. They also but don't you... have this size in Italy. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't even attempt to buy clothes in Italy. Like I, I went to um, in H and M in Palermo, Sicily, just like killing time. Walked around, and I, my size waist is a thirty six, and I put on what a thirty six is there, and it was like I, I couldn't even get my thigh. It could, they wouldn't come past my thigh. Wow. And I was like, what size would I be here? Like a forty four? And they're like, oh, we only have up to a thirty eight. Prego. <laughs> Everything is prego, Your next prego. special size 40 waist yeah, I, so. I yeah. ate too much prego <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say Prego, prego But that's like Yeah, no I'm, I'm, Something about Like New York food People will say like New York does, Like, you know New Haven's the best pizza But mm-hmm. I feel like New York Is so consistent Like Very good We Joe's. may not have the best food But we're just so consistent Can't yeah. go wrong Yep yeah, but, I mean, like, I, you just walk into this random bakery, and there's not even a line, and it's some of the best sweets you've ever had, where it's like, there would only be one of these in another city, and it'd be like a two-hour wait to get in, but yes. we just, like, any pizzeria you walk into in New York will, like, blow somebody's mind from another city. Well, there's so much competition, you gotta be good, or you're yeah. gone. That's it. But Gomez told me he went to Italy, ate pasta and pizza every day, lost weight, because mm-hmm. they have so much less preservatives I and did. sugar and, and all that shit. so much. And you walk. Yeah, I, that's what I did. I drank wine, ate pasta and pizza every day. 
went off my sweets rule, went off my intermittent fasting, and I gained. Oh, I stayed the exact same weight. Isn't that weird? And they drink wine and smoke cigarettes. No headaches there. with the wine either. I did wow. not get one headache from drinking wine. What I was is just that? because they don't have the sulfates in them. Yeah, it's we organic, put, or is it? Well, well, we have to put sulfates unnatural. and preservatives, and even when yeah. we import the wine. But there, they don't have to. The sulfates They're, are really what, what I think give you the hangover. Yeah, really. Well, remember Brutal. when we would drink that natural wine and we never got hangovers? No, no, no problem at all. No. But then the wine snobs here will trash the, the Fuck natty em. stuff. Yeah, they're like, they're like, oh, that's fucking garbage. Gotta, Try this. These wine guys don't know anything. I think if you put two different things in front of them, they couldn't tell. They're putting their nose in there. They're oaky. It's berry. Oh, Get out of here. They must know something. You've given your life to it. You've got to know something. I don't know. I'd like to see a blind taste test. You yeah. ever seen a uh, suave shampoo? They put it in all these different bottles, and they asked everybody, "What's the difference with it? scientists?" And they were like, "It's friend. all the same." Really? Yeah, suave and pert plus and uh, organic, whatever bullshit. It's all the same. Mm. Yeah, people just follow. They just have these political talking points, and then when you ask them one follow-up question, they're like, "What?" I saw this video of this college kid, this girl. She was like, I'm sick and tired of straight white men getting things that were designed for us and they're taking things that we deserve and blah, 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 blah. And then the interviewer was like, what's one thing that the straight, straight white man has gotten from this university that you haven't gotten? And she was like, I have to go to class. Yeah, <laughs> the video, And I'm like, yeah. I get it. It's like it's he not, took he took that YouTube video and got a lot of hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, you know, yeah. yeah. If you're gonna fucking protest something, just just have reasons why you're doing. Do it. Do the research. Don't just do it because everybody young, else is doing it. Part of being young is having that angst and not knowing wh knowing why. I feel like sure. Yeah, this person was 45 going back to school. <laughs> yeah, and now it's all over the internet. Yeah. Before it was like annoying young people were annoying, and you go all right, whatever, and you move on. But now it's like in your face well, that, on TikTok. Well, it and must everything. be embarrassing, you know, being young and having this weird record of just doing dumb shit. Do you see Dina? Dina Hashem, what she posted? What she no. posted? Oh, it was great. You know, she got kind of canceled or whatever for making that rapper joke yeah. years oh, yeah, yeah. ago and like death threats and I'm going to come to your house it and was kill crazy. you. It was she crazy. She got doxxed. She got doxxed. It's crazy. Horrible. And people actually showed up to her house. I don't, I don't, know, I don't about know about that, that but, but she but... she flipped out. She was really scared. It fucked her up. Where whatever. She so she posted the other day. Where is it? Uh, she showed the, the direct message. It's on her stories. It might be gone by now. But she showed the direct message and it was like, I'm going to kill you, bitch. You talk like that about a rapper. I'm going to come to your house and slit your throat. And then that was 2018. You can see the date. One message later, I can't believe I was this cringe. Sorry. And you're like, whoa, people can change. Like people can wake up. A couple years later, they were like, geez, that was Yeah, but harsh. you know what? Still fuck that guy. Yeah. Still, like, like, great that you had some growth, but, like, you're writing to someone you're going to slit their throat. Yeah, because but you got a thousand of those. That's the truth. There, There is truth to that, what Sam's saying, too, because I think about that a lot as well. I'm like, you know, yes, so-and-so, we're all different, whatever, but it's like, I was 18 once. I've been through controversies. Totally. I never told every, anyone I want to slit their throat. Of course. Or do this. I, or I wasn't like, DMing women yeah. violent threats. Yeah. Yes. No. I, like, I think, I think progress is and good, but was, also, like, I'm not going to celebrate his fucking yeah. uh, growth. And I'm, if not I, saying, I'm not saying he's a hero, but I think yeah. it's a good sign that people can come back to Earth and wake up a little. But yeah. no, I agree. This no, guy's yeah, a piece wanna, of shit. We want to be in a society of forgiveness. I agree with that. But it's like, for me, it's like sometimes if the person has that in you, then you have that in you. Like, uh, so, you know, like if you have it in right. you, you have it in you. And yes, you've grown. Apology accepted. Fine. But it's also like. Stay I over there. Don't ever come in my space again. Yeah. It's like, you know. You're evil. You got evil yeah, in you. You have it in you. So it's like, I don't want to be near that. Yeah, right now there's this, uh, what do you call the Southern Baptist, the gay-hating, God-hating... Convention? No, no, the God-hates fags oh, people. Westboro. <laughs> Westboro. Baptist, oh, uh, Westboro, yeah, yeah. Dad. Tony DiStefano? The Westboro people. <laughs> <laughs> the Westboro people, they're all like, you know, go to gay funerals and pro that. Good, you're going to hell, gay guy, your gay son sucks, whatever. You're all going to hell. And then a lot of them now have come to light and be like, oh, shit, that was crazy. Sorry yeah. about that. And right. I think that's good. You know, right. as much as I hate those people and they're they're ignorant and, and oh, yeah. stupid, no, it, it is true. better than just them staying like that. Yeah, forgiving someone, in my opinion, like you forgive them and whatever. If they, but that doesn't mean I have you have to be in my life every day. I can forgive you and move on and good let point. go. But it's like good that, point. We don't have to be friends. Yeah, you know? I, don't, no, I, I think don't, Dina should hang out with that guy. He seems cool. That'd be <laughs> yeah. I pay good money to watch that. I guy. get so angry, dude. I get like I I left the uh, <laughs> I left the doctor and uh, oh my god, you know what fucking happened to me. It's, this may be a bit here, but this happened to me. I was leaving the uh, doctor yesterday. They fucked up my appointment. Hmm. Like, I, I took it down very... No way it was my fault. 
I was like, you took it. I sound fun to date right now. Uh, <laughs> what? Wait, what? There was no way this was my fault. No, they gave me the, they took down the wrong date. I see. So I go in, they're like, no, this is your fault. I said, no, it's not. I took this down correctly. Yeah. And the woman starts laughing in my face. And I was like, you know, my neck's in pain. You're laughing at a person in a hospital. And mm. she just goes, she goes, I'm sorry. Oh. But I still nice. was angry. I'm like, what do I do with this anger? That's big of her, though. I know. That's big of her to say sorry. I know. No, I appreciated that. But now you got to punch yeah. something because you got to get it out somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, can I still hit you in the face real quick? Right. And he's like, all right. <laughs> yeah. No, I. Was, I uh, uh, oh, sorry. I was walking my dog yesterday on my block, and a car pulled up, and the window rolled down, and this woman just dropped a can of Coke out the window. Oh, I hate that. And shit. I'm like Ooh. right in line with her, so I'm eyeballing her. I'm walking the dog, and she hits me with, I litter. I was like, oh, I was like, all right, you win. Oh, I like it. I'm, a, I'm a bitch. Deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm do, a murderer. Well, I think there is could... a, there's acceptance in the honesty of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, anyway, well, I was telling my mom this whole thing that happened afterwards. You know, I'm on the phone with my mom and I'm complaining about because it. it took her a while to apologize. She didn't just say I'm sorry. I was like, hey, you know, this is really rude. And and I kept my cool, but you know, I wanted to call it's her, hard for her a process. horrible she has name. A GED. <laughs> but I'm telling my mom this shit, and my mom, and I go, what a trash bag of a human. My mom goes, where did you learn to speak like this? I don't speak like this. And I'm thinking like maybe the angle for the bit could be like, yeah, men my age don't learn to speak from their mother. <laughs> yeah. You, th you think guys are just having confrontations and. As I'm walking out, I'm like, I have never. <laughs> I said ever. good day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How dare you? I'm going to write a letter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get your father. <laughs> That's a funny uh, bit. Maybe there's a bit there. Definitely a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't teach you to speak like this. Yeah, yeah. I also know a lot of dirty talk. You <laughs> didn't teach me that either, lady. No, they put the needle. I got the. I went today. I got the neck injection, and it's like, it's so weird having to leave, uh, because I'm like, hey, guys, hurry up. I, I'm there for a while. I'm like, hurry up. I've got to be somewhere. i got to be at a work thing. And they're like, oh, you have a work thing? And I'm like, I have to get drunk in the afternoon. Please. I have <laughs> yeah. to. Podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, man. But she the... did apologize. So that's She good. apologized. And I, I did appreciate that. And I saw her again today, and there was like a nod. I didn't. It was, oh. you know. There was no. Yeah. Listen, people acknowledge they mess up. That's yeah. fine. I think, I think it's a, yeah, when the people who like. They get so insecure about their fuck up that they just like, well, now I'm gonna just that stand they dial that in. because it's like there's a dishonesty there. Yes, yeah. but being honest about it, it's, it's like you know, it's like um, in the Revolutionary War, Major John Andre, he got <laughs> he was British and he got um, caught spying for mm. the British, and because he was a major, they said George Washington said, well, you know, you're a major, so you spied though. And he was like, listen, I spied. I know I spied. You guys caught me. I'm not even trying to deny this. I'm a spy. And because of that, they were like, look, the penalty for this is firing squad. That's what happens. Whoa. But since you're the major and you were honest, we're going to let you hang yourself. Well, you can hang instead. <laughs> so you, we have to kill you one way or another. They have yeah. to public, You have to get executed. Wow. That, <clears throat> but they let him like choose his own execution. Because uh, it's like the worst version of the prices, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you Damn. either get firing squad or you eat Viking shit ravioli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what did he do? He hung himself. He I, got well. He, he that's was probably hung. better. But and they I go, hung is this is this from the David McCullough book? I'm sure they mentioned it, yeah. but I just know that this is actually I actually learned about Major John Andre from the show called Turn. It was about yeah. the Washington, uh, George Washington spiring, Culpepper spiring. Very interesting. Mm. But they, what they do is for him, for him, what they did is rather than just letting him hang there and like let his eyes bulge out of his head, they hung, they brought his, you know, they wrapped the noose around his neck and then they brought him up to like the next branch up and they just let him drop. So he broke his neck. Whoa. So it's an instant death. That's better. Better. Not just great. About, be honest, kids. <laughs> Don't spy, I guess. That might help your neck. <laughs> give yeah, for real. Major John I feel Andre. a lot better right now after this injection. What did they right. inject you with? Cortisone? No, it wasn't cortisone. I couldn't be drinking most cortisone. It was some sort yeah, of. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have. <laughs> yeah. But you're not supposed to. Yeah. Um, no, but I'm glad it's. Uh... Yeah, because that neck shit, having like a debilitating injury like that it just makes you feel like it reminds you to be grateful when you're not yes because a lot so of times true. we're only you know reminded reminded of uh you know being grateful when we're in pain or really yeah. sick but it's like you got to think about it every day so true got to be grateful every day because the neck goes out you have a bad night's sleep and you're like yeah. oh this sucks and oh, i never think years. about when it's it not sucks. bad it sucks and i'm like trying to exercise through it all the time but i'm just in pain it sucks yeah but we also bummer. don't want to be that dude who's like complaining all the time and right. I, I already complain all the time a comic it's like you know <laughs> yeah that's I know. Mean. How well, about those OnlyFans twins? 
Oh, what? from your from, Instagram. From my Instagram? Yeah, Wait, they were, they were pretty hot, right? Talking about them. What happened? They were pretty uh, hot. Yeah. I missed this. And oh, they were in the San Diego. Worker, yeah, uh, that you did. Everybody's talking. Uh, we were talking about them all trip, uh, the guys who I was with. I've been potting all day. I haven't seen this. Uh, you got I hit up no, by twins? Uh, no, they were in the crowd, and they were like pretty hot OnlyFans twins. What? And, uh, it's hilarious. I'm we were all jerking off to Sam Morrill's Instagram. And I literally, uh, <laughs> and literally, um, a girl I'm seeing is like, "Did you, uh, did you sleep with them?" And I was like, "I spent the night with you. What are you talking uh, about?" Yeah. She's, she's like, "I'll ask you again." <laughs> <laughs> they were really smoking hot. Yeah, oh, really? See, do they, they do they show themselves? Do they, you should have thrown up their. They should have uh, thrown up their OnlyFans. Someone tagged them. Someone in the in my comments tagged them. Can we get? A, I think they're pretty popular. A big screen here. Look there we go. Look at these twins. And the guy. Oh, uh, and then, go. of course, there was like an OnlyFans guy there, too. Ah. With his girl. Where he's okay. like, I just show cock. Was that the Crest Theater? Was it no, Sacramento? that was the Balboa. That oh, was, oh, Balboa was a good theater, San Diego. too, right? Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. I love San Diego. San Diego is one of the best. Beautiful San women, San Diego. Too. Nice Republican gem. <laughs> it is red. <laughs> it's like, it's in the, it's like, no, it's but, purple. Yeah, yeah, it's purple. It's purple. It's purple. It's purple. I'm kidding, yeah. But yeah. uh, it, no, it's San Diego is a great comedy crowd. Great uh, crowds. That club, that American Comedy Company there was always cool because uh, they'd give you weed and edibles and stuff right oh, in the green room there if you wanted. Really? I, know, yeah. I couldn't work there because he called my agent the C word in all caps. And that, <laughs> that, cost, uh, that cost a lot of clients work. And then he would like always offer way more money than what the comedy store offered. But I was like, I guess I'm going to yeah. go with the one that didn't call her the C. You kind of like, you almost hope the other club, like, can you call her a cunt too? This one has more money. <laughs> yeah. But now, but now we got Berkowitz, so he's like, call me a cunt all day. Yeah, I like it. It turns me on. The club just explodes. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Burke's upset if you don't call him a cunt. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, what the fuck? I thought we were doing a good deal here. You're supposed was, to tell me you want to kill me and my family. It's so funny. Chris and I have this like power agent, but then he's just at the Knicks game the other night, and he's just texting me, and he's just like, I'm so sad. And yeah. I'm just like, it's so weird to see a guy wow. yeah. who's you just used to being like, fuck you, give me the best yeah. deal, and you're like, yeah, and then yeah. he's just like, I'm not, I'm not happy right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's just like one of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like, I know, he was like, he was like, it's so beautiful to see the way you are with your daughters. Sometimes I want to have a family like that. I'm like, no, you don't. You need to be a fucking hard ass <laughs> motherfucker. Don't go soft on me. Yes. Yeah. Keep yeah, yelling just, at you're strangers. Just rooting, you're rooting against them having a life at all. Yeah. No. I'm like, I want you to get a vasectomy now. <laughs> <laughs> you're always available. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I want you to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> he reps like Bill Burr and Kevin Hart, and he still gets back to like all our texts because he I just know. doesn't stop working. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. That's what I'm, you want. I'm waiting. The one, I remember one time I had an agent who accidentally sent me, I think it was like JB Smooth's offer. And it was like something, this was like a few years ago. It was like, he sent me, a, he was like, hey, got the money up. You're going to be making, you know, a hundred grand for this thing. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. I like told my family, like, you know, like it was like that, um, from uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, when the the butler thinks he won the lottery, uh, and yeah. it's like telling everyone "fuck you, fuck you," and then he was like, "Sorry, man, that was for JB Smooth." Yeah, he was like, "You're at fifteen hundred dollars for Cap City." Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're literally like, "I'm gonna be Leon on Curb," and they're like, "No, you're no, not. no, 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 you're the new Caesar Sportsbook guy." <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a really cool guy, JB. JB Smooth. Great guy. I barely know Couldn't him. Couldn't be nicer. But the couple times I met him, he was like the nicest dude. On I the did Jim and Sam with him once. I I don't know what he said yeah. he talked the whole time i didn't understand any yeah. of it but then he took photos with us after he was super nice jb smooth He's one funny. time one of the first opportunities i ever got like in you know when i was like just doing comedy as a full-time job was i got to be in a nike commercial for carmelo anthony's when he was on the knicks like his new sneakers oh yeah wow. and jb smooth was like the lead guy and i was like somebody on the train that like would talk to him Whoa. or whatever and this was like up. yeah Google, uh, yeah, Chris Stefano, Carmelo Anthony, JB Smooth, Nike commercial. I'm, I don't know. And, I didn't uh, know you did this. this yeah, yeah. Cool. It was like it was like 2013. And, wow. Um, and and just what, to, what was it for? It was for Carmelo Anthony's like sneaker, like was Nike, a, Nike sneaker. Was yeah, it had to be Nike. Yeah, I think. Is it was this Nike. it, Jordan? Stay mellow. This was it. Stay mellow. So the this is the fortune teller one. Yeah, that's me and him. Oh, look at and that did one, Yeah, and then we did one on a train. So you got to meet Mellow too. No, Mellow didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, wow! But watching, you're right with him. Right with him. Yeah, I, I just, I was doing comedy like whatever, two years. Someone made a hundred thousand dollars for this. It's great. <laughs> yes. Yep. And so, those were pretty cool shoes. They were good. They were comfortable. Did they give you a pair? Yeah. Th not only did they give me a pair, they gave. 
they gave me a pair of the Carmelos and then they gave me 10 because it's all with Jordan. They gave me 10 pairs of Jordans like from the, like like the ones, the twos that they, they get uh, the, the fives. They gave me the Laney's. They gave me all these different types of Jordans in there. I, my daughter had just born. Uh, no, that wasn't it. I got in with Nike in a way. And then when my daughter was born a couple of years later, they sent her like 10 pairs of Jordans with Nike sweat set, Jordan sweat sets for like each year. Like I still wow. have Jordans and they w went all the way up to size 10 for like, they were so cool. But then I don't know what happened. I've lost contact with them. But anyway, watching Carmela, watching JB Smoove interact on a set and keep it funny the whole time really? and learn everybody's pro. name. Yeah. I was like, oh shit. Like That's how you do it. Watching him, I was like, oh, okay. So he's humongous star and he acts this way. So it's like, don't ever, you know, think that you're bigger than you are. Cause I saw a guy at his level be so kind and down to earth and cool. I was like, the ones who you see or hear about are like, just like dicks to everybody. I think they're just really like insecure and like they oh, want to yeah. be bigger than they are. Exactly. Because the ones who are confident don't act that way. Oh, every man, time. Every, every story you read about Nicholson on set back in the day, he was like the coolest dude. Yeah, like he was Jack awesome Nicholson. to everybody and you're like, yeah, that's what you fucking do. Yeah, but, but, we've, we've but that shouldn't all, even be celebrated. Like that's how it should be. We've all had that uh, that op that headliner that you opened for who was super mean and you're like, but I don't even respect you. <laughs> yeah, you, you suck. You're bombing every night, you're a hack. You have a puppet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You hear that, Dunham? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Did you ever work with him? I never worked. He seems like a nice guy, yeah, Jeff nice. Dunham. He's a zillionaire. Oh, my God, dude. He sells out like arenas. Like Huge. We sell out like one night or so. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. like it's just like he's – I was doing Dallas. I was doing the House of Blues or something in Dallas a few months ago, and he was doing the arena. Yeah. There were people at, for, my, for his show at my hotel, and I was going down the elevator, and one of like the kids that was with his family – like recognize me he's like oh you're here i was like yo you guys coming to the show they're like now nah, we're going to see jeff dunham yeah and i was like oh man <laughs> I I was, know. but then but then when my show i realized my show ended at like 8 30 i always do seven o'clock shows his only started at eight i was like oh i want to get in yeah i want to see him but i couldn't get in oh that's my jeff dunham alarm <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that you did that ad with mellow and jb i mean that's it's so amazing these athletes just get paid they don't even have to show up they're no, just like, i know they're just using like a clip of him with a basketball no i'll tell you i'll be honest this was 2013. I had no money, had just started, but I, I, me, I had nothing. I had two lines in that. They gave me $100,000. Wow. $100,000 of like, That's I crazy. couldn't believe it. Like, I remember I was crying. My dad was like, because that was like the first time I ever made anything. Yeah. You know? And so I was like, holy shit. So I was thinking even back then, if I got $100,000, I'm like, nothing. Well, you have a shoe what, deal. It's what insane. did JB get? What did Carmelo get? Woo! Well, you know, you see these ads now where it's like, Kevin Hart and and Iverson and S Steph Curry and it's like it looks like they're all photoshopped in. It looks like they didn't even yeah, all do. It. They're it all up. so busy that I think they they just used uh, oh, CGI or whatever. Is that I'm right? I'm sure they did. And just for that, like I don't think Kevin Hart's going onto your set for something like a Chase commercial or whatever. For you have to give him like a million dollars easily, easily. Not a game. Talking about cash back. Are they together? There's no way they're together. Why not? Cash back. Words. They're probably all too busy. Yeah, but. They do look a little fuzzy. That's what I'm saying. I bet Kevin was there and the rest weren't. Because he's got a visa thing. He's got like a chase contract, I think. Interesting. That could be the future. Just CGI. Why do we need uh, Chris D? Right. We'll just, we'll just put a little image up of Chris D. That's it. Why not? Getting his ass Oh, eaten. I knew who I think is gay. Mitchell Robinson. <laughs> Who's that? I think Mitchell Robinson <laughs> the from the Knicks, Knicks is gay. I think if it's you listen possible. to him speak, I think it'd be, it would be awesome. It'd be awesome if he was. It'd be awesome I think if he, he was is. our first, Pull him our first up. gay star. Yeah. I bet I can tell by the way he is dribbles. Is Mitchell Robinson gay? I think he is. Oh, super gay. That's a wrap. <laughs> hey, man. He might just have a lisp. I don't know if he's definitely. Oh. Mateo pops up from underneath <laughs> the thing. <laughs> we love Mitch. I thought, yeah. I could see I it. I thought he was. I love Mitchell what? Robinson. It'd oh, be great dude. to have like an actual like an NBA out, superstar. Especially in New York. Who's gay. Hmm. We need it. Who is it? <laughs> that might be a nice tactic right now. Like you're a bubble player or whatever. You're looking for a max deal. You come out of the closet. You're getting it. That's Be gay good for point. the deal. You're not getting good the deal, point. but you're getting endorsements. Be gay for the deal. That's my new yeah. reality show that I'm pitching. Take it to the butthole. Gay for the deal. Take it to the butthole. <laughs> hey, rip job. Do any other news stories or we cut <laughs> touch right. them all? We touch them all? Oh, no, we got another one. Uh, I'm, I'm 
man in Pennsylvania was arrested for attempting to mail a live snake. Mm. The man had packed the snake into a box and attempted to ship it to another state. The package was discovered by a postal worker uh, who contacted authorities. The man was charged with recklessly endangering another person. Now, was that really a dildo? And he was like, it's a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Just ship it a snake. I read this one. He actually, it was to his ex-girlfriend. No, oh, really? yeah. he was trying to kill her. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I mean, but that's like, can you imagine you get a package from your ex and you're like, finally, I got my shoes back. And right. A live snake. Whoa. Like, he's like a stalker. He's a creep. Yeah. 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 Damn. Do you mail snake. stuff back after a breakup? No. No, no. I, I, I mean, for me, it's like if we break up, you know, I just I, anything that you want. I, I, there's nothing that I really need or care about that much that I would need to get back. No, I, I mean, do, do you send it to her, though? Oh, um, I usually cut my losses, too. I don't I don't ask for shit. I back. just don't no, care. No, no. Keep the kids. What's the best you, thing you left behind, Sam? I don't know. That's a good question. Good question. Probably his heart. Girl, I broke up with this girl, and uh, she, we lived together. She was like, I'm coming to take all my stuff. I was like, no problem. She had the key. I was like, I won't be there. Uh -oh. She took the fucking soap she bought me, like half-used bar of soap. Wow. That's, That's petty. petty. That's petty. Yeah, she was mad. That's I, I really liked these purple chairs that I had. I had these purple, like, upholster chairs. And when I moved out, she got to keep the chairs. And then I swear to Christ, like, a month later, maybe three weeks later, I would like walk past like the old apartment just to like, you know, smell her, yeah. whatever I was going through. <laughs> and the chairs were out on the side of the, by the fire hydrant for garbage collection. Oh, come on. Threw away the fucking chairs. Yeah. And they were all fucked up and had all marks on them and Whoa. stuff. So I was like, I can't even, I was like, fuck. I didn't think the ass eating was gay, but the purple upholstery. <laughs> you ruined you my got. furniture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say right now I'm dating Mitchell Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I had an ex once mail me back. I didn't ask for it, but she mailed me back a Julius Randall jersey that I had. Damn. And after this playoffs, I'm like, you could have kept it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you're the reason why he's playing so bad, you <laughs> bitch. <laughs> but no, I'm trying to think of it's probably like sports related shit that I left there. That you think. care about, yeah. I don't yeah. I I'm just I don't really But it's a passive aggressive move sometimes to mail it back. Of course. Oh, it's yeah. a message. It's a horse head. Sometimes it's them being nice, like, hey, I miss you here. I'm sorry, here's your stuff. But sometimes it's just like no note. Here. Good riddance for my life. Yeah. I never yeah. bring shit over. That's my move. Really? I keep it very separate. Segregation. Right. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I believe in it. No. But yeah, I, I don't bring anything over there. And when I break up with them, I take it myself. I don't want to have to get any mailed or come back over. I don't want to see them again. Like you like to be where it's done, it's done, it's separate. That's, That's it. it. We're never talking to each other or seeing each other again. Totally. totally. You usually don't want the shit back. You're just, I'm just like, keep it. Even if it's like, you know, maybe it was like sneakers or something is like the worst thing I lost. Yeah. It's like, you can buy new sneakers. Yeah. It they were never like like really expensive or anything. Well, True. Well, I'll tell you what, you can't get the Carmelo Anthony sneakers from 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Those did not sell well. And I think it had something to do with my commercial. <laughs> you, you got paid. I got so paid, So fuck yeah. it. Now, you know a lot about history. Yes, I love history, You're man. a buff. I'm a buff, baby. Well, I'm not a buff. I'm not a... Uh, uh, but I like certain parts of history. I like to learn about it because I kind of feel like when you start to delve into history, you realize there's really no new problems. Yes. There's just new right. leaders. There's new technology. But the problems and the human, the way the human mind works, it's been exactly the same since the beginning of time. Yeah, human so like, nature. Nothing's new, man. History repeats itself. And it, and it, it can be comforting, right? Yeah. When Where you the see hell the is he going? But uh, he was aff he's offended. Ooh, divorce? Kid? <laughs> he's got to pick up. Oh, nice. oh, what a good dad. Oh, I love it. Um, I wish he was my dad. But it does help. It's like, it gives you comfort here. Like, this shit has all happened before. It really, yeah. yeah it, and it's like Cold, Cold War with Russia, been there. Yeah. But we have yeah. the dude, vaccine stuff, been really? there. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Dude, Benjamin Franklin was one of the first pro proponents to be like, get, they would call it inoculation back then, not vaccination, but it's like, get inoculated because his son died of. Um, Typhoid, what? Tuberculosis. Oh. It was some. Uh, was it typhoid? His son died of what they thought at that time to be a preventable disease. A lot of times, people would get leeches. You would get. I think it was. It might have been typhoid, where you would get. You had it. I would put a leech on you, suck your blood out, infected blood. Give myself a little bit of it, just enough to make me sick to build up the antibodies to yeah. to beat it. 
And that and it was very controversial back then. The same protests that were going on. Interesting. The, the same exact thing, except it was about leeches and inoculation, not about COVID and vaccination. Interesting. And you had people for it, people against it, the government getting involved. The same exact thing, just different technologies and different mouthpieces. But the problem is now we have a megaphone. Before right. you were just like the I hate the inoculation guy on his porch. Yeah, you could. All, it was only a few people in yes. Philly, right? Yeah. Now it's just like ah, it's Every, all over viral this and yes, that. Everybody has an opinion. Yeah, that that is a that is an issue. But it's I, a new factor. Honestly, I think the way to solve that too is is like, for me, like I'm on social media. I don't even run my own social media anymore. I'm on social media so infrequently really? because I'm like what made I you just make that decision. know the cancer of it. So what happened was it for is me evil. is really so I lost like 40 pounds and got off so and and got off social media. The beginning of the weight loss and the intermittent fasting and the social media coincided with each other. It wow. was it was last August where I was just like I hate the way I feel in my body and I hate the way my mind is. So I was like. I sat down for like hours one day and I was like, how do you fucking fix this? Like, you know, I, I, I'm always worried, you know, I'm still always worried about my kids, my family, but I was like, take a step away from them just for a few hours, go sit in a park, which I did, shout out Fort Wadsworth Park, Staten Island, sat there and it was, it was a British stronghold during the Revolutionary War, but then we beat, we got it back because we're Americans. Fuck you, limeys. Yep. And, and so I said, figure this out. And the way I came to, I said, I had seen, I was on social media scrolling like mindlessly, not thinking and i saw uh elon musk had tweeted this is not an ad this is not a plug i lost a lot of weight using this app called zero fasting app intermittent mm. fasting and i was like that i feel like that's a sign i said take this guy's advice take it and then so the mindless scrolling that you're doing that's stopping tomorrow doom scrolling yeah so it. i did that and i was like and 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 it and i don't think that i would have been able to continue my fasting and my weight loss stuff and my like staying focused on what I need to do in my career if I was still on social media wow. because I didn't realize subconsciously every day I was comparing myself to somebody else or comparing my life to somebody else's life that was all manufactured anyway. And then when I got rid of that and I started only thinking about me and my life and me and my world, I was like, I'm happy I have what I want. Yes. So what if I'm not selling as many tickets as so-and-so or so what if this guy's more jacked than I am? It doesn't matter. And I don't see it every day. If I see it, I see it. If I hear now, when if I hear about a friend doing well, I'm just genuinely happy for them, as opposed to comparing myself right. to them at nauseum all day, every day. And so I'm doing great, and you, but you yeah. can't take that in because you're comparing. I, I have a similar problem where I yeah. can't feel like the good a lot of the time. It's right. just, it's it's tough. It's like I'll I'll be bummed that one venue's not selling, and my agent will, will be like, "This is like very good. You're doing but that, very, but that's yeah. okay because at least it's. I mean. It's, you know, we want to be happy all the time, yeah. but it's like, at least you're only comparing yourself to yourself. What right. happened to me was I would be in a city and be like, oh, I sold out uh, Baltimore. And then, you know, because of geo tracking and tagging and all that, because of these algorithms, I would then see an ad for, you know, you guys are doing Baltimore next week and you have two shows sold out. Mm -hmm. So then it would automatically make my win feel like a loss when it's not a loss. It's just. There's so much goes into that though. Like right. maybe like you know we all tour so much. Maybe you just played a, a city that was close to it. Right. Maybe, maybe of uh, course it was it wasn't spaced out. Oh enough. yeah, no, no. There, there's all logical reasons why. But for me, it's like the you know like Teddy Roosevelt says, comparison is the thief of joy. And I was like, mm. that's all I do. All all social media is to me is a comparison. Tool. Yes, compare and you will despair. That's it. For us, it's you know it's it's a, it's a networking tool and it's a publicity tool it's a marketing tool to sell our tickets so i'm fine with that but i don't have anything to do with it i give you know the guy who runs it the content i approve the flyers and then he posts it because that's all i'm using it for if you're doing it for anything else then we're either you're comparing yourself to others or you're comparing your you to you at a at a time in your past and then what's going to start to happen is you're going to forget that six months ago you took that perfectly crafted picture of yourself with the right lighting and you're like man i gotta look like that guy again but you actually look better than that guy but you forgot that that image of that guy was just perfectly crafted and not real uh -huh. so, so i don't even compare me to me i only compare me to like present day me yeah you know, like was i better yesterday was i you know am i trying to get a little bit better than yesterday that's okay but when you're talking about me from a year ago, I'm like, I don't know. So many things have happened since then. Yes. But we forget that. You're so living. Social media, and then also not taking in the social media comments. Yes, the negative. Yeah. Is, is, everybody knows about the negative of how much it hurts no matter what. 
but the positive too. The positive will throw your ego off. The positive will make you kind of, you know, you'll get like this kind of version of yourself that like you have no balance and you're mm. like, oh, these people are saying I'm awesome, so I must be. Or these people saying I suck, I must be. When it's like really like both are probably true. Yeah. Right, so you right. stay in the middle. And we're, I think- We're that, all okay. Yeah. 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 War, war, we're and it's like, you know, and, and I just think like, and you got to compare yourself to what you wanted to be. If you could see yourself now from 2010 or 2011, you'd be like, what the think fuck can I complain us, about? Think about any of us sitting at Caroline's March Madness thing that we did in 2012. And if any of us had the careers we have now, we'd be like, oh. we would never complain. Oh, but yet it's 10 years later and all we do is complain. All we do is complain. Well, I, I don't complain about careers no, no, but you know I, what I, mean. I complain about little dumb things. That's like, I'm, I'm just irritable. It's you don't not... have to speak about the Chinese like that. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, I I'm I'm happy. I'm pretty happy. You know. I hope so. I hope you can absorb and take it in because all all of us what we've done is pretty no. I insane. think there's moments... you just fought with the doctor today. Yeah, but with that's a but that's a little thing. <laughs> you fought with the neck doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why I order? Uh, I uh, no, I. Uh, I get cranky, but I'm like happy no. genuinely. Little moments throw me off, but they don't throw me off. Well, like listen, today. but that's the thing. Like what what I'm saying about me and social media and my fasting, it works for me because I needed to do that. But you may not need to do that. It's like some of us, like we're here having a casual drink and it's fine. But some of our peers, if they did that, they'd be dead in a week. Yeah, you, you know. So it's like whatever work you got to find what works for you. I think that's what this game of life is. Is like yes. what works for you. You got to have discipline too, because my lady's obsessed with TikTok and she'll just she won't get her eyes off it. We'll put a movie on. She can't. Uh, we're at a restaurant i have to take her phone away from her and then she'll delete tiktok because she's like it's it's ruining my life and i'm like great good for you two days later back on the phone i'm like whatever she's like i got tiktok again and i'm yeah, like she'll You're find a, a reason to yes. justify well, why it's, she needs it's it. so sophisticated what they do to, to hook you in i mean they, they literally take the shit you look at the most that's the type of stuff they feed you you know what i get a lot here's a tiktok peeve is a ttp the, a ttp yeah. <laughs> the people who are cooking but just like on their counter uh, they're oh, making nice. nachos, but they're just like throwing everything. Out. They're not using a tray. It's just like chips, sour cream, yep, cheese. It's yep. just like I'm like that's your table. These super yeah. cuts, yeah. A yeah. mouse ran across that thing an hour ago. They yeah. don't care. Yeah, yeah, but she loves that shit. I hate She's it. all over them. I mean, look, I watch, but I mean, that's why. I mean, I clearly on some level, I'm into this cooking stuff. Yeah, or like food stuff, but right. I know, but I think I think it is bad, and it consumes so much of our brain space. Like right. I think I write less jokes and have less ideas because of the internet. You're not giving yourself that moment to just be like yes. isolated. Yes. We used to have that moment so much more, where you would just kind of like be. Louis used to call it like being in the abyss. Yeah, that's a that's great Louis, thing. You he need once that. said to me, "Is like put the put the fucking phone down and be in the abyss." You know, that's where the what jokes does he mean come. by that? Like just just in the isolation, alone, like feel the sadness. And that's when the thoughts will come in. He's yeah. right. He's completely right. I mean, he, he used to he did that bit on panel once. Great about bit. How, like his he's like doesn't want his kids to have a phone because you get to just look at the phone and not feel sad. He's like, but feeling sad is a part of being a human. And, and you got to learn to deal with that, or else you'll never be able to deal with it. Right. And I do think it's good for creativity to, to not have a crutch to just lean yes, on. When, yes, yes. Because sometimes those low moments is when something really funny hits you. Like, you know, I was cranky about the doctor. I'm like, well, maybe that's a joke. What I just, you know what I mean? Like you have yeah. those things where you're like, yeah, if I mom. just looked at my phone and was like, I'm cranky. You don't, you have to just like let yourself feel cranky totally. for a second. I know, my mom. And then it goes away and you're good. My yep. mom told me once I would, you know, call her or whatever, like every other day. And, you know, it's like after months and months and months of like always calling her, she was like, you're always calling me like when you're driving alone. And mm. I was like, yeah, I mean, like, I'm bored. I don't want to just be in the car alone driving to wherever. She was like, but you should be. She was like, you feel like you're, you're making up reasons to call people because you don't want to be alone. She was like, but you should just practice being alone. If you, and, if, and it's a baby step to just, you just be, hang yourself in the I know, I know. That's what I, I ate on in my childhood bedroom next to her. I'm like, and the notice, you made me do this. But no, but, but she's right. Like, and now I think about that. Sometimes yeah. I still cave and I'm like, make up a reason to call a friend or text a friend or a family member. But I'm like, yes, you, you, like, we're so scared. We never really have to be alone because of our phones, but like, being alone is like it's a great, great thing. Yeah, it it's is scary though. Well, then, that that was so much of our early years as a comic. Oh, it's just being yeah. in a hotel room and just being like, I have to write because I'm alone. I gotta do it. Right. Where you know, now we take all these people with us and it's great. We've leveled up, but it's like yeah, it's it's less time to write, less time to be creative, or we're creative in another way. I guess with the filming and, and all you that. And you gotta stuff. do podcasts, and that's time consuming. So yeah, we have we need more content now, and we have less time. Well, that's something I've been actually actively thinking about, and that's why I think like. I'm trying to get more into like 
finance or like qu quality over quantity because I'm like, you know, I started comedy and got into comedy because I didn't want a day job. And we've put so much stuff on our plate that it's a day job now. Sure. Right. It's a, it's a thing. It's a beast you have to feed over and over and over oh, again. Yeah. And I'm not saying it doesn't have to be like that because it might just be like this is the phase where it has to be like that. But I'm trying to actively think of ways where it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah. Where it's like you can just like get out of it because it's like every week I'll look at my schedule and I'll be like, oh, I'm not on the road this week. I have nothing to do. And then it's every day is podcast, meetings, this, that. And it's like. Well, you realize there's there's power in saying no to shit. And I think that's something that we forget because of so many years of just True. like unpaid gig, shitty paid gig, weird thing that you have to just, and they're like, you don't ever, I remember Mike DiStefano, you don't say no to nothing. Like that's the right. shit he would say. And you're like, all right. And then uh, you get to a point where like, you can say no to, I mean, I had a meeting, like the other, like a general meeting. And I was like, I, there was something I wanted to do this day. And now it's like in the middle of my day, I Pointless. can't do anything. And I was like. Fuck this shit. Why am I doing this? There's no this? reason, by no the way, with, with, in my opinion, too, especially with social media and what we do for a living, there's no reason to ever have a general meeting. You see what I... Yes. Just make the choice, man. Google uh, every, me. My life, is on, my life is on the internet. Exactly. You know? And we have the same cut. You give me a water. You go, how you been? Uh, doing the road. Yeah, All we'll right. be in touch. Shut yeah. up. You got any ideas? Actually, I do. Okay, bye. It's, yeah, just, like, it's no just one, one of the things, but like, you realize you can say no. Like You don't have to do everything. Like pe I think people expect us to do everything, and, and you don't have to. There are days where you could just be like, I, I'm going to take a day off. Well, I yeah. think, too... Going back to Italy, that's another thing that I learned is they're okay with you not getting better every day. And it's a very American mm -hmm. ideology that we have to be the best. And, you know, we'll <laughs> always say, like, whatever happened to that guy? It's like, well, to them, that's a part of life. It's like you get really big and successful and whatever and you're good. But it's like if it doesn't always stay going up, that's fine. You're going to level off. That's like being a human being where, like, we look at that as like, no, oh, so-and-so fell off. When you it, can't go they, backwards. They look at that as like. What are you talking about? They had a great right, year last year, and right. now they're having a normal year this year. That's part of life. What's the difference? It's no like so. It's just our way of looking at things. Sometimes, where especially being New Yorkers and in entertainment, it's like we're always like we got to keep getting better. Or, go I don't want to sell a, a two thousand seater this week and then a five hundred seater next week. It's like well, if that's what happens, that's what happens. As I know. Like you but know that have, hurts. Well, sometimes you're doing so much radio and so much so much. Uh, so many podcasts because you're like fuck i gotta sell more tickets for this gig i'll get on this podcast i'll do this i'll do that and then you're like maybe i could just take a w and not trying to keep ad adding shows that too but that but it's hard for us i think you're right we're wired in a way where we have to keep leveling up so what i what i've been doing mostly now though there's not every weekend but like for example i just came from albany right and uh at the egg great venue and great i could have added a second show i sold out my show like two months in advance so i could have easily added a second show and come close to selling out but i didn't because i was like what's more worth it for me we're in albany the show's at seven o'clock it's two hours away from home is is the extra money that i'm gonna make on the second sellout worth it to get home at 4 a.m or have to get home the next day and not be able to take my kid on the bus to school or can i get home by 11:30? get a good night's sleep and take my daughter to school in the morning and sacrifice the money. And I sacrifice the money. And it's like, it was so much better to walk so my daughter better. to school. And it, that's what the money's for is yeah. to do stuff like that. Yeah. And I do that a lot now. I'm like, and I you can go back. I it's can, not like you can't exactly. go back. It's like, I could have added a show even in Ithaca if I wanted to. It's right. like, but you know what? Instead I got done at eight 30 and I had like a great dinner. This motherfucker runs upstate New York. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm the fucking real Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> Nipple rings and all. Hell yeah. I'll sexually assault everybody. <laughs> and so, so I, you know, instead had like a great dinner with Mike Cannon was on the road with me hey, Mikey. and I had a great dinner with Mike Cannon and we had fun and I was like this is as opposed to you know eating pizza in between sets right. fucking just being buried in our notebooks not talking I'm like not everything is money man like not yes I feel like you gotta or what I've tried to do is like make money as a currency that I need for me and my family to survive but it's not the only currency I deal in it's like time is a currency. Oh, huge. Being away from my family is a currency. So I evaluate all Freedom that Freedom is a currency. Freedom's a currency. So I'm like, if I don't want to do the second show, even though it's leaving money on the table, it's like, well, that's not the only thing I deal with. I'm getting time back and I'm getting, you know, stress back. And uh, and there's the people will be there next year. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's uh, 
Unless there's another Wuhan Weezer. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going anywhere, too. We're, we're in this for the long haul. We'll be doing comedy exactly. for years. And so. that's why you have to protect yourself. And, yes. And, and not run yourself down. I mean, look, I, I have a hard time saying no to gigs. Like, Same. I'm, I'm out for like 12 days at a time, but I, I do kind of like it. But man. you like it. And I think, yeah. Here's the thing. If you like it, I like it. it. Th that's the thing. So if you like it, you like it. I like not. I like. But you it. have you have a family, Kids. right? So so I so. But again, but if I didn't, I would be like, what? What? Be out, have fun. But for me, it's like, you know, I don't. Uh, I, you know, I don't. Even with Radio City, like you know, Burke was like, you should add a second a, a second show at Radio City on the same night. Will sell out quicker than theater at MSG, most likely. But I was like, yeah, but then I have to do two. In one night, it's New York. It's big for me. It's my family's going to be there. My daughter's going to be there. I don't want to. Yeah. Then what? Then I like can't really focus on them. It's like we have a whole dinner plan. Like I'd rather just take my chances, do the show the next night at the theater at MSG and see what happens. Maybe I sell it out. Maybe I don't. And that's another thing, too. Like with Radio City, it, you know, it sold out so quick that then we put a theater at MSG on sale and that wasn't selling as quick. Of course. And the not, people yeah. in my team were like, oh, maybe this is big. Maybe this is a mistake. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. We're forgetting to celebrate. The win uh -huh. of Radio City. Like, Good forget for you. about. I'm glad you said that. Forget yeah. about the theater at MSG. If it sells no tickets, who gives a fuck? Right. Radio City sold out. Yeah, good that's point. what this was about. Great point. So, so I've kind of released myself from it, and I've released myself from like the comparison. Go, go buy Chris. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah please, 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 please. Because if I if I don't sell out theater at MSG, I'll kill myself. <laughs> and I and I might be there in November. So yeah, so oh, yeah. So yeah, and then if I kill both. myself, Sam could take my date. <laughs> yeah, go see it's show. a good date, September twenty third. But uh, buy, definitely buy to go see. Get to, Chris. Well, great well, show. Can we get the? Uh, I guess we don't have the Google bitch, but can we get his dates up here? Yeah, Tiki there it is. Tiki All I got Wiki. right now on sale is uh, the only thing you can get tickets for is theater at MSG September twenty oh, third. I might be adding. I'm going to be adding a fall tour, but it's not on sale yet. So just go get those tickets in in uh, New York and check out his Netflix special. You got podcasts up the yin yang. Chrissy Chaos, hey babe, uh, yeah, patreoncom slash Christy Comedy. Yeah, man, we're fucking doing it. Hell yeah! And, and uh, uh, hit me up got... for your investment advice. Yeah, and, and the Netflix special, Speshy Weshy. Chris is hilarious. Got uh, Comedy One of the best. Central specials. Oh, Oh, yeah. Uh, terrific comic. I'm, I'm sure most of you know him anyway, but, you know. Yeah. Thank check you, it man. Out. And thanks drink Bodega Cat Whiskey. And thanks for the All goddamn day. donuts, baby. When does this come out? June 4th. June 4th. Oh, good date. See me. I'll be that week. Uh, yeah, you got me. Greensboro. Oh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Asheville. Oh, the orange peel is Charlotte. great in Asheville. I can't wait. You Charlotte, love Knoxville. Memphis moving slowly. Help me mm. out, guys. Birmingham. Chattanooga. Nashville. Denver. Uh, Santa Fe. San Antonio, Houston, you get the gist. You can't sell in Memphis? You're falling off, man. You gotta start, you gotta work yeah. harder. You keep Sam saying no to shit. Samuel.com. All right, I'm, I'm all be in Australia uh, during this time, so if you're there, come see me. I can't wait. I haven't been in years. Got a lot of dates. We're adding shows. And uh, come on out. I'm not coming back for a while, so say hello, and then I'll be announcing a theater tour in July. And the special's coming out in late July, so... Praise Allah. Good stuff cooking. Be nice to yourself. Get some time. Get some freedom. Play with your kids. Say no. Get a cupcake. And go fuck yourself. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Queef it up. Thank you guys. Bye. What an F. <laughs>